Hi, my name is Zai, and this is me playing Quake Live. I started playing Quake back in 1998, and for many years I've been trying to find the perfect mouse. But there's no such thing as perfect, and we all want different things. The idea is to find the one that's most suitable to you. This is the Corsair M65 Pro RGB, an ergonomic mouse with a 3360 sensor, 8 buttons, and it's fairly heavy for a gaming mouse. Those are the four most important factors to consider. Shape, buttons, sensor, and weight. But the order of those depends on the games you play. In this review, I'm going to try to help you understand if it's right for you. We'll start with the four main points, before getting into extra details that may influence your choice. First, the shape. It's important to know your hand size and grip style for this. My hand is 18cm base to tip and about 9cm across, from the thumb to the knuckle of the little finger. This is a medium to large size mouse, but there are several factors to look at here. The buttons have a gradual slope, which is great for all grip styles. There are also some slight grooves in the buttons for comfort. The hump is more toward the back, which is usually meant for palm grip, but due to the gradual slope, it's not really a factor either way. And it's about 3.5cm high. Between the thumb and fingers, it's about 7cm wide, that's the grip width. And from the edges of the mouse feet, meaning the parts that are touching the pad, it's 8.7cm, but it's actually about 11.5cm long. This is very far off the 2 to 1 ratio that I usually prefer for aiming. A safe shape is one that allows for multiple grip styles, one that doesn't dictate exactly where you put your fingers. This is a fairly safe shape, in the sense that they have the sides right, except they have a sniper button right in the way where the thumb should go. This causes an issue because whenever a mouse is lifted, the thumb applies pressure, and that means the button is activated. I found that I was able to place my thumb here, between the side buttons and sniper button, but it did lead to accidental clicks. And also, it feels very unbalanced due to the thumb being much higher than the fingers on the other side. I've also tried playing just holding the sniper button in constantly, but the button doesn't feel sturdy enough when lifting the mouse. If I were to recommend this mouse to anyone, it would be to people who want to use fingertip grip, and that's for 17 to 20 centimeter hands. But maybe palm, 16 to 18 centimeter, and claw, 16 to 19 centimeter. But the design is really letting down some great features that this mouse has. I hope that Corsair can take some notes from this review, because they're doing so many things right, and making quality products. And while there will of course be a market for this mouse, if they use the standard shape, they could become a top player in the competitive gaming scene. It's also a heavy mouse, at about 120 grams, and that's without the weights. With the weights, it's about 140 grams. It seems Corsair is going for heavy materials, most likely because they think people will assume it's high quality, and therefore, good. But most people prefer mice under 100 grams. They should aim for a weight of about 95 grams, and then give the option to add extra after that, up to about 120, not start with 120. But those are the only real negatives and deal breakers on this mouse. The rest is high quality. Here's a listen to the buttons. The left and right buttons are fairly quiet and tactile, and they should be good for all game types. I can't jitter click, but these seem like they would be good for that too. Mouse 3 is tactile and not too hard to press in, and the mouse wheel feels smooth while scrolling quickly, but still offers a good amount of tactile bump in single scrolls. It's actually one of the best scroll wheels I've ever used. The side buttons have a little too much travel, but the tactile click feels good, although they are a bit thin for general use. The DPI buttons are soft and flat, they shouldn't cause any accidental clicks, they feel great too. And the sniper button has a nice tactile sound, and it would be better if it was just a bit further forward. So overall, the buttons are a big plus on this mouse, very good performance. Now let's talk about the 3360 optical sensor implementation. There's a lot of mouse testing going on out there with statistics and machines giving answers. I'm going to give you the human testing, so you know how the sensor performs in-game for human hands. I use Quake Live because I'm most familiar with it. After playing for over 17 years, I can usually figure out if a mouse has a problem, or if it's just something in the game. Starting off with some rocket jumping, this is a very simple test, but a good indication of how well the mouse performs. I struggle a little due to the weight and balance, but no problem with the sensor so far. And moving the mouse across the pad as fast as I can, I can't make it lose track and spin out. In the sniper test, I zoom right into FAV1, and start with pixel by pixel movements at 1600 dpi. Speeding up a little, we see that it's tracking as it should, no problems. I tested this at 400 and 3200 dpi as well, and it was great. Testing for acceleration and deceleration, I moved the mouse across the pad very quickly, now tracking back slowly. 
so no deceleration or acceleration. The liftoff distance is tested with DVDs, which are about 1.4mm thick, and you can adjust this in the software, low, middle and high. On low, it's under 1 DVD, on high, it's over 2 DVDs, so a good range that should suit most people. There is no easy way to test delay between movement of the mouse and on screen, but going by feel, this seems very responsive. In the line test, we see no jitter, angle snapping or skipping, but there were a couple of random kinks in the zigzag lines. I don't think it's a big issue, just something I'm mentioning so I can check it in the future. The liftoff movement is well controlled, and there is no sensor rattle, so a solid performance as expected from a 3360. As for build quality, clearly Corsair was making that a priority, which I love about the Corsair K95 keyboard too. And they've succeeded with this mouse, as it has no rattles, even without holding the buttons in. Tapping or shaking? No problem. The material on top is a nice rubberized texture, but the sides feel a bit harsh as they were probably trying to make it easy to grip. It's not on comfortable, but not one of my favourites. The cable is fairly smooth for a braid, and it's 1.8 metres long. It holds its shape a little bit, but it shouldn't be much hassle. And on the base, there are 5 medium sized mouse feet that glide smoothly. In the software, you can assign the buttons to macro, text, keystroke, shortcut, DPI, timer, mouse, and media control functions. In lighting, you have a range of effects to choose, including rainbow, which can apply to both main zones, or set individually. Here's a look at the RGB cyclone. And performance wise, you can set individual colors for the DPI light, and it goes from 100 DPI all the way to 12,000 in steps of 100. You can set the sniper DPI here, and the liftoff height here. So they're the important factors of the mouse, but now for a personal opinion, while I show you some highlights. Can I aim with it? Well, no, not really. Despite a few highlights, it's too heavy and not the right shape for me. I can play decently, but there's no way I'd use this in competition. If they took the mouse wheel, DPI buttons, left and right buttons, center, and the top textures from the mouse, and then put those on a standard shell under 100 grams, we'd be looking at an amazing mouse. There is so much right with it, but the shape and weight are a deal breaker for me. And I think the same is true for most people, not to mention the sniper button placement. However, I know there are going to be fans of this mouse, so don't let this get you down. As I said in the beginning, everyone wants different things. Just going by what the majority of people have told me, they won't like this mouse. Still, we got this mouse for the sensor, and I'm looking forward to more mice coming out with the 3360. Hope that helps. If you want to support the channel, and if you think this mouse could work for you, you can buy using the Amazon links. Or if you're from Australia, use the M-Wave link. Subscribe for more reviews and gaming videos, check Twitter and Facebook for small updates, and if you want mouse recommendations, please visit my website and use the search. So thanks for watching, like this video, and I'll catch you in the next.